Welcome back fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Ice 9.11 and of course we're playing as Germany and I would love to hear from anybody who didn't already know that before I said it. And also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Love to see you around more often. So, you get many great videos. As we talk about history while playing Hearts of Iron or other um, games. Ground attack tactics. Uh, here, okay. Um, yeah, we're going to let those go. Continue micromanaging this. more again this part particularly I wish I really could I know you can sort of set, set some generic priority but you know up here or whatever but just do it hit at need and whether you need more reinforcements or upgrades just go with it okay close air support ground crew they can rearm Repair, maintain the aircraft faster, better, whatever. Okay, um. Well. Okay, the first Schlisch division. So we're going to upgrade from what we've got there. Yes, okay. And the second, just forming a new one. The third, I think that's Guderian in there. And tell us at least to me I think it's a wartime photo you can see this guy here look he looks like he's scanning the skies for for any attacking aircraft he's he looks worried about that one why are we stopping out here in the open I'm at the gun ready to fire just in case but at least that's what it's like to me okay and the fourth Panzer division nice photo later in the war obviously with a Tiger one but cool Oh, that goes away. Good. Any of those on map? And no. They're all in the production pool. Okay. They've all got partially. They're still expensive, but they're partially built. Uh, well, let's come here. I want these other things too, but I also want those units done. Gonna have to, these are going to obviously clear out here. There's more resources. We're not, we don't, well, we could, you know, we'll need more once we up our um, stats, but they're no longer bad. But once we get, uh, you know, go to war and get that, we will need them. No, let's 
something up. Okay, and now the cast pilots will be able to hit their targets better and whatnot. Go to some other area. Now let's do lightning aircraft armament then. Okay. Flieger Corps. There we go. Okay. These guys. Do we want to send these guys over there? Um, who are they attached to? Yeah, let's core up, so yeah, let's put let's give you a leader here. Ah uh, There we go. Detach. Get on board ship. Ship come over, rebase back to here. Finland, Finland, Finland. Yes, yes, you may do so. Okay, single engine fighter prototype has advanced. I think grayed out, yes. But it opens up all of these. Let's start there. And what more can we... Oh, create the 5th Panzer Division, as well as the 1st Division, 1st Warla. Okay, the 5th Panzer Division, formed November 24th, 1938. Great, cool. That's a cool photo, like it. I guess somebody's girlfriend was named was Wit name was Paula. Maybe that's the radio operator. Is that what, Wilhelmina maybe or something up there? Interesting. Okay. Uh-huh. So we want that. And we'll take the full division.
radar. That there. Okay, paratrooper activation. Okay, cool. So now we can have paratroopers if we want. And we do want, but I don't know that we're going to um, immediately start. Um, but we'll do some of this here. And what else do we... Um, air landing infantry and equipment. Air landing infantry. Air HQ, airborne. So it opens up air landing infantry, but also air landing equipment. Okay, some of these are being helped by other things, well, other events, but we're going to come down here. Yeah, see here. Here we go. We got this big, huge jump because of. Various events, including various Reich events, but ah, okay. Um, first, there we go. Um, do we have a one new deck? Yeah, there we go. To Richtoven. That's not Richtoven. There's the 137. Ah, there it is. Okay, good. We're getting that. We're bringing those back down. All of that will help build some of these others faster. Four games to offer. Yeah. If we can get all of these done, it would be a good idea. Money, supplies, yes. Military parade, yes. We want that. We're getting a lot of these, so what? Let's. Okay, we are over by eight plus, almost nine. Who do we uh, not want to buy from? I am. Panama. Let's cancel Panama. Um, Colombia. Yeah, let's cancel South Africa. That should bring us in more money. And resources to help Franco, which of course improves our relationship just a little bit, but we can afford those resources. 
be a thing as the man power, but... Well, now that they stopped the Japanese trade, go down negative a little bit, but oh well, no problem. I'm gonna build back up some money. Okay, yes, we want the fifth flotilla and... Motorized core. Can I sell you US supplies? Can I sell the Soviet supplies? You want to buy supplies? No. Does the US want to buy supplies? Yes. Except. Now we are down a little bit. Argentina. I'd rather buy from you than protein. Okay, a friendly nation has placed an order with you. Okay, um, Switzerland. Okay. Take Lufthansa planes for the Luftwaffe. We don't need them. Oh, perfect. Well, we can scrap them now. We want to do that. Which that then does this. That came at the right time. Put that over there. And the. Uh, Luftverteidigung zone west. Basically, air defenses for this area of Germany. So, it's all part of the West Wall program. And I think you want to come down here and. Yes. That will cost one day of one and a half IC per. I think I say you'll want it. It was a lot. It far from makes it invulnerable, it just spreads out a bunch all over the place. Beep, boom. We also have... Um, have we even none of those ports yet? They're coming. They're coming. Okay, we got received payment, money, supplies, good. Rebuild the books. But I think the reason that these are happening is, um, I think we already have that here, is that they're still here. Yeah. Well, um,. Yeah, okay, we'll take that. U.S.-German rift widens. The U.S. State Department assigned its ambassador, um, Hugh Wilson, pictured to Berlin to an indefinite tour of duty in Washington and published news, uh, new protests against Nazi treatment of American creditors. Should we pay our debts and improve relations with the U.S.? Okay, so we can make payments. Now, that's going to hurt our relations with the U.S. and cost us money. We don't make payments it hurts our relationship even more because they're already upset because we haven't been paying off well so we're going to pay off to keep so we want to keep trading with unfortunately we just sort of did but um it hurt us okay the shell plan um this is oberst adolf von shell um what he wants to do is streamline the production the number of trucks from a, of different types of trucks from 113 to 30 in cars, from 52 to 19. Motorcycles from 150 to 30. And um, to the best of my understanding, when it says like 113 to 30, that doesn't mean, oh, different minor variations in, you know, delivery vans. 
it means just having a basic delivery van, van model that uses the same engine, transmission, uh, frame, uh, axles, and you know all the real sort of parts, and you know maybe the cab, but whether it's enclosed or flatbed or um, four feet high or six feet high, you know van backs or whatever, you know it's it's not necessarily zero customization, but it's a streamlining of um, styles down similarly to like motorcycles it's you know it's getting it all down to um, a few different types of cars and motorcycles for the nation to make to to make it um, more efficient to um, build replacements and maintain these things this is what can happen under a totalitarian state obviously in the US you can't really do that outside of an actual war so Automotive construction industry gains 500 and industrial zone gains 15. So we can look at that. This is automotive um, construction industry here. So obviously we can't research that yet, but this will significantly help it. Let me come and look here again. Not enough to push it over one, but it is going to be sort of like this one. So we get to Starting it. Uh, yeah. Okay, King Carol the Second. The Fuhrer met with uh, the Romanian King Carol the Second at Berchtesgadens Gardens on the twenty fourth of November, nineteen thirty eight. He greatly insulted us by declaring that the Romanian um, gazetteers that uh, he came. Oh, two Romanian gazetteers. He um, that he came into the Reich only to visit his relatives. Furthermore, he wants to meet with the Führer only because his tour in Great Britain and France failed, and his country is in a very frail diplomatic situation. Our delegation made him a cold welcome. The Romanian king wants to build a highway between the Reich and his country, and the assurances that and assurances that we will not support the Hungarian. Um, Revisionism. The Fuhrer expresses reservations in the matter of the highway and told the king that the conflict between Romania and Hungary represents no interest for the Reich. Okay, so um, we offered before, remember really early on, we offered, and the AI always refuses, to come into alliance with us. What um, we don't see here is he... Um, had gone to Paris, there are events covering this, um, and to um, London to try to get um, assurances and um, get Romania into um, the Allies, and the, the Allies say, nope. Now we're back down to 557. The modifiers have shifted. Um, so... That's, you know, because they realize they can't protect Romania from either Germany or the Soviet Union. France and Britain just doesn't have the capacity to do so. Okay, elections in Reichgau, Sudetenland, um, December um, 1938. There were elections, so, in which 97.32% of um, the adult population voted for the NSDAP. So yes, yeah, nine, it's a bit skewed, and it's not a secret ballot. People will know um, uh, how you vote. But most of these people are voting for being part of Germany as opposed to really being um, voting for Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party. But we lose some dissent. That's after all the dissent that was caused by taking these things. We've paid down partially damaged forts on the Sudeten defense line. Um, and, okay. Um, yeah, we don't. We don't need them. What are they currently at? They're currently at. Okay, so. Pillbox. Way down. Yeah. Still have some level of defense. We want to create some sort of raid out down there, but well, I hope to never need that. Okay. Uh. Oh, I'm sort of like. 
Okay, Ribbentrop meets with Bonnet. Um, Ribbentrop meets with French Foreign Minister Georges um, Bonnet in Paris, the Franco-German um, pact text, the French government and the fully share a conviction that uh, Pacific neighborly relations between France and Germany constitutes one of the essential elements of a consolidation of the situation in Europe. This is basically like going and saying, hey, yeah, you remember we were demanding all that land back from Czechoslovakia that was well, part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire? Because now this happens in 38 still. The rest of Czechoslovakia hadn't been taken yet, historically. But um, we're cool and fine with you keeping the land that you took from us eh, for losing World War I. We're, we're, we're all good with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're not going to go to war with that over it. So, yes, so we'll do this. Um, help our relations. We've had many things that have pissed France off. You boat. Oh, no. Okay, fighter ground control, good. I'm gonna stop that for now. Almost 39, so we can start researching the 40 text. There's a lot of stuff here that would be good. This is good, but I just don't want to add fuel to the needs of the cavalry. Cavalry. I say that wrong, I know. Cavalry. 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 Airplane radio communication, we'll go with that. Turn on the clock. No. No. Electros. Welding. Electrical welding technology. Well, now that we are entering back up to five eighty nine. Oh man. I don't even know if I want to do that. Um We may just wait till 1940 to do that. Okay, now let's do this. And yeah.
come down here, we get some future U-boat aces that have yet to um, work their way up. Those aren't meant to be bad, they're just meant to be young men that you get them early and they can get experience by sending them out. Coastal submarines coming in. Okay, fairly good there. We have a second of them. Okay, well, we don't really. Okay, well. Soviets. Okay. Try to improve our relations. We want to trade with you while we fight everybody else and before we go to war with you. We are maxed out at, on oil. So. Let's come over here. Let's check on our oil. Um. Okay, well who we don't want to trade with. Now we've gotten... Those are all small, so maybe we'll leave those. I don't know. Romania. But we don't really want to trade with Colombia. Or Venezuela. Not that it's a problem, but it's across the water. In fact, it may have been better than those than the U.S. Um... And I know this may be partially shooting up because of various other things that come back down, but by doing so, we will reduce some of our costs. This first batch will be night fighters. So, um, we have somebody who has night fighting skill set. No, it doesn't look like it. We'll attach, well, let's just. And do fighter command. And we have some more divisions here. Well, I think we're going to have plenty for going after Poland. Just got to defeat them as well. Good divisions. Not great, but good divisions. And I'm sure you may have some energy. And Okay, I'm 
hungry. Come on, Argentina. Mm. No. Okay, SS Pioneer Shul Radishkilo. Radishko. Um this is a um a bit of a want it to have it early kind of thing. Um, this is definitely a picture of um, SS Pioneers. Um, that's their cuff title. That's their collar patch with the um, cross um, shovel and pickaxe. And that's them practicing building a bridge. Now they were at this time being trained by the army. Later in ooh, 42 or 43, I forget which, here in um, this place somewhere in Ch Czechoslovakia or Bohemian Moravia, they build an SS pioneer school and start doing it themselves, but that's well into the war. Um, combination of finding this photograph of SS pioneers training, you know, after they'd built I think the bridge just stops there, but they're just training on how to, you know, build it. And that they did have SS Pioneer Sturmbahns and everything. So then, and I looked into it, so that they're they're um, being trained by the Army. Or training at Army facilities. So we can leave it to the Army, or we can um, do it. We're going to do this. Now, I want to check something here, just, oh, production. Um, if it's working as I think. Okay, that's that. Close. Good. Okay, we're going to build a school. Cost us a little bit, but we're going to build a school. In Czechoslovakia. Japan, yes. Okay, we want to trade with you. Money again, good. Okay, January has happened to us. Global game balance shifted. Italy is at next Albania. Okay. Third wave. You want the third wave? HQs, yes. Now, this we're talking about HQs, I believe, is what it says there and not. Um, looking at um, full divisions. Okay. Um, before I do any of that, I want to come down here and look at this. So we have National Highways, which TRE gives you straight off, and I sort of still fully support that. Mining we've taken and railroad taken. And the last one that we can get is Agricultural Industry. Collectivized farms is purely for communist nations. So we're not, we can't get that. I don't know if they're mutually exclusive. But notice it takes down manpower, it just gives you gives me other things. So um so we want one more because we'd love a fifteen percent manpower modifier. So annual national focus still we're gonna do economic spying just for that efficiency thing and um national focus here. Um we are at 6.06. Oh boy. Um, we're going to save this. Save this. Save this. Save. Be safe. Now. Now we're going to do annual national focus. We're going to go for long term, which that actually sort of hurts us. So, but we're going to do this first. 
hopefully get the fast deal and we're gonna again do Reich economics it'll be next year that we'll start doing some of these other things so we have the save if we need to go back examine our industry we're going to boost this you can see all of that we're gonna get those heavy industries now before anything changes I'm going to drop us all the way back to basic mobilization temporary well no yeah temporarily we're going to do that doesn't cost us unlike in hearts of iron four to switch back and forth so we're going to switch down from there let's just put this to the front of it and we're going to see this go for it let the day happen the day we calculate yeah see now we're all the way down to 476 here, Storm Pioneer Battalion, 627 motorized. I presume that's what that means. This unit, so cool. We'll form up the battalion. Guns, since we've taken down the Sudeten um, uh, fortresses, we can, and if we repaired them, we wouldn't be getting this. So, um, we'll lose some supplies and get some Czech heavy artillery or get metal and rare materials well we really don't need metal or rare materials we got plenty of that so we'd rather have some guns condors um we're gonna let them fly now we're gonna come over here and do economic boost but we're doing long term so that's a negative five percent of ICs. have a day to recalculate that what's left to do oh there we go farm mechanization which will dig into our money but yeah we want to do that and we might as well do farming horse vessel which will remove some other brigades okay Okay, so we now have that effect on us. So now we're down at 458. So, yeah. Now, let's save again. Might as well. Close. Oh, not this. Yes. Let's go back to full mobilization and see what we get. Wait for the day to to happen to us. Okay, so now we're back to 585. Much more reasonable. We can still go to full war stuff. And it, I still think it's, it's going to be climbing a bit more because, well, I no, um, forget where they, they were. The VICs go to uh, sort of a formula, you know, minimum, you know, number of ICs. Oh, maybe they're not. I was thinking they'd be red at first, because yeah, you know, when you first build them, they got to sort of repair themselves once they're placed. I guess maybe not. don't remember exactly where they happened, but we checked some of the likely spots. Let's see what the fifth. Now we're down five percent because of long term. Okay, um, Joseph Beck uh, and Hitler meet at Berchtesgadens, Polish Foreign Minister. 
Germany has been ramping up. It's um, we need the Danzig corridor. It's not Danzig, the Danzig corridor. Um, and he's coming to try to get peace. And Hitler, of course. Oh, sure, we're going to be peaceful, no problem. Um, NS Funk, just uh, that's National Socialist Radio. Um, one uh, show what the magazine looked like. So Valentine's Day girls or marching Nazis, whatever kind of covers. Um, and they talk about radio programs. You know, what's going to be on the radio? Kind of thing. So just interesting stuff. Not really meant to do anything. National recruiting policy. Well, I'm going to wait for it to, to hit me with that negative thing. This one, not selected. Like I said before, when I've had that happen. Okay, um, build mag. Yes, we want to build mag. Factory. And now we want to select this. And then we want to go balanced. Yay. Five eighty five again. Okay, see we've got ten percent up and down. Um so good. Okay, um SA Wehrmann Schaften. In January nineteen thirty nine, the role of the SA is officially established as the training school for the armed forces with the establishment of the SA Wehrmann Schaften SA military units. Many SA men need to be transferred to all branches of the Wehrmacht. This will make the army hair more polit um, politically reliable. This will not mean the reduction in the number of units, but the effective strength of the units is reduced because many of the men joining, um, or many of the reigning men are over 45 years old or have other important jobs and will not be active full time. Well, most SA men weren't active full time, but it varied. Um, so basically, more than you can count, units disappear. And units should be back. There we go. Um, the big difference is, is, which I'll do it some other time, all the commanders are gone. I mean, they're still, they're just back in the pool. What I did was, is I have a check for a bunch of units, not all of them, um, to see that they still exist, so that you didn't either delete them, but notice our our um, manpower's back up big time. So we want to attach these guys. Um, is there a local SA unit? Leader to attach, or no, I guess not. I guess it's all. Is it all right to. Yeah, so no, this one goes straight to. Straight to the head of the SA, and this one here. Um, these guys were already the weaker br brigade types. Um, so I didn't remove them. He'll get to his local. Attachment. So that's the last real event for giving you SA units, um, which is just simply taking away and giving back what you had before, but um, these brigades are weaker now. Uh, so that's all it is. And so, oh, we need to do this, select all. I still don't want to upgrade these. Now you can choose to upgrade these um, to the latest models. Uh, we'll let that sort of not we won't deal with that because it'll come off of it shortly here. Um, you know, if you want to have them with better um, suppression and better equipment and things like that, yep, let them upgrade. Go for it because these aren't disappearing. The earlier units, had you upgraded them, they would have, all that expense in upgrading them would have been wasted because I, I removed them all. Uh, the other units are stronger um, for combat. And so if you're going in before the beginning of 39 and having a war, 
say like if you get the war over Czechoslovakia and instead of going back to the last save you decide you want to fight um, Britain and France at that in 1938 great you have a bunch of SA militiamen to help you hold the line uh, they're not great fighters because they're meant to be not street fighters but they're meant to be you know just militia uh, kind of things and so this is militia that's a little better equipped or, or you know or, or this is political militia um, so and they're you know more more men stronger this effective so these guys now are still useful um, if you want to use them in occupation zones and they did use them in occupation zone I know they created an SA unit here in Warsaw, in which most of the men were transferred from other parts who just had jobs and other reasons to be in Warsaw. Warsaw was devastated, um, and they were going to rebuild it as something completely different eventually. But there, and um, I didn't give you any of the SA units, but there were SA units formed in this part of, um, you know, Alsace Lorraine when Germany retook it. Um, they also formed and used SA um, in these parts of occupation but mostly mostly and there's other places things but mostly the SA throughout the war period is used as a domestic um, militia and unlike the Volkssturm which included SA men once it's being formed this is an ongoing throughout the war um, so Security. You need security for, well, a lot of factories had their own security units. Uh, we'll be seeing some events covering some of that. Um, but you need some extra security for, well, or a rally or a, an event or whatever within the Nazi world. You call in the SA. Um, bombing raids happen. Well, the SA may come out and help clean up the damage along with Tino and other more professional units. But they will also be called out and looked for downed pilots, you know, the bombers or the fighters or whatever, um, and scour the countryside. Um, you've, I would be shocked if any, well, maybe some of you are so young you just haven't watched it, but most all of you, uh, you know, watched the movie The Great Escape. Well, units like the SA were, you know, when the prison break happened, were sent all out um, all over to, to hunt up, um, you know, escape prisoners of war. Also... Um, during the war, the Nazis um, worked to empty the cities because of bombing. They um, and they did it primarily um, to uh, save the population. But a lot of the people did not want to go. They just didn't want to go. So they would force people out, put them on trains. You know, these are the good German types. Put them on trains to the countryside, and then the people would just start migrating back to the cities weeks or months later. They just didn't stay. Um, part of it also was um, they were trying to get the kids. They were trying to get the kids away from the um, parents and their traditional schools and put them in Hitler youth camps and educate them away from their parents in National Socialism. But there was also that political move going on as well. So they were doing that as well as doing, um, just trying to, you know, but using the bombing as an excuse to get the kids out. But they were also trying to get um, families, often women with children, but um, because the men were fighting or being useful in, in a factory in or near the city. And so that they would use these SA uh, men as security, uh, trying to deal with it. And I'm talking sort of hordes of people moving around that eventually they just give up on trying to do it, uh, arresting the people and, and sending them back and around. But so this is an internal um, militia security unit is primarily what they were used uh, up until they were starting to feel being invaded and then they were being put into... Um, the, uh, the Volkstrom, but also in units out in East Prussia, and we've talked a little earlier about some of the Sudeten um, SA units that were actively used in Poland. They were being used as part of this border mentality, units along the borders as sort of security troops, um, extra border sort of guards and patrols, 
uh, and that type of thing. So they were sort of somewhat offensively being used like that as well. So that's sort of the role of the SA, but you've got a pretty good um, setup here. So now, um, Spears done with his um, new Reich Chancellery. So impress the diplomats. And we walk inside, walk down the long hall. Um, this is through the doors into more halls. So theoretically, you know, diplomats and other people will be waiting for meetings with Hitler or whoever. They had to walk through these big impressive halls, come through here up to this door. I think this is sort of cool architecture. And again, more stuff. In through Hitler, in through this that's the other door that comes into this room. This is sort of his official Reich Chancery office. Um, after the fall of France, this is where they hold the field marshals um, ceremony. We'll see where they create a bunch of field marshals and other things like that. But Hitler doesn't spend much time in here, at, really at all. This is, you know, he isn't here daily with meetings with whoever. Um, I know I talked about this in, in other series. I don't think I've talked about this much in this series. When Hindenburg was alive, every single business day, you know, uh, you know, five days a week, Monday through Friday, and unless Hitler was on some trip around Germany, and he was doing that a lot, but he was dutifully showing up in the morning to the Reich Chancery and leaving in the evening. So long as Hindenburg was alive, he would show up, go to work, come home uh, and you're sure I'm there were late nights or whatever but that's what he do almost immediately within within a week or two of Hindenburg's death and he gets over to being you know the Fuhrer um, not just the Chancellor but sort of the Fuhrer of Germany he quits that just immediate you know almost immediately stops that he stops going into work um, he has his Berlin apartments that, that he's at, um, but he mostly only comes here for um, meetings and things. He retreats to um, Berchtesgaden. He works out of Berchtesgaden for most of the rest of Germany, you know, not just through the war, but through the 30s. Um, he, he's here. He, he's not necessarily like remote, like the people don't see him. He's constantly, though, traveling around Germany. We've seen him, you know, like, oh, up at Kiel with um, uh, Admiral Hothi or um, at, you know, some speech or every year at the um, uh, anniversary of the Beer Hall Putsch. He puts on a, you know, his earlier, not the old uniform, but uh, the SA style uniform. And you also see photos of Goering, you know, in 37, 38, putting on the SA uniform again and marching with the old comrades for, you know, that kind of thing every day. They sort of make it a martyr's day and it's sort of a big thing for the beer hall putsch. So he's constantly out there and being seen by the people. It isn't a retreat from, from duty or from, well, duty, I don't know, but re retreat um, from being in, um, being too remote from the people. It's just he's up here, and those that get to see him here are a small group of people, and they're the ones that are actually running the government. He stops running the government. And so this is why you see, you know, um, Joseph Beck, the you know Polish foreign minister, coming to Berchtus Gardens. Chamberlain coming to Berchtus Gardens. You want to see Hitler, you come to Berchtus Gardens. You, they drive up, wind up the road, they come up here, walk up these steps. That's how they come to see Hitler. And that's where you're seeing Hitler. It's very, very rare that he'll meet a foreign diplomat in um, in Berlin. One of the cases was breaking up of Czechoslovakia. They get, um, uh, I forget, uh, uh, was it Joseph, um, I want to say Tito, but um, that's Yugoslavia. Um, I forget, um, starts with a T though, I believe. Um, the, the Slovak um, sort of leader, get him pressured. Uh, oh no, it's, yeah, get him up here, 
as well as getting um, what is it, Emil Hozda, I think, the, the the Czechoslovakian president, and you know, battering him into submission to to allow the occupation and breakup of Czechoslovakia. Hitler's up here for that uh, this sort of official thing. He's being kept waiting. The, the, the Czech prime, premier, prime minister, whatever, is in one of those long corridors. He's being kept waiting there for hours and things like that. So some of the drama does happen here. But um, this is no longer a sort of daily come into the office. Hitler just doesn't run the government that way. And in fact, and largely, he doesn't run the government. Hitler is not a government minister in, in almost any way. He... He just really pulls back from that and running it. He now he again he's the spokesman, you know, for the um, the Nazis and the German government. So he's you know constantly dri driving and flying and taking trains around Germany for speeches here and there. And no, I don't have a you know good idea of his schedule, but he was being seen. People were seeing him uh, and that type of thing. So he wasn't trying to be that in that way remote from the people. Um, he would have all kinds of minister level people come to him. Now, the person running the party is Rudolf Hess. So if um, one Gauleiter has a conflict with another Gauleiter and they can't um, solve it, sort of that goes to Hess. If it's something smaller and the two guys can't work it out or his local boss can't work it out or it's, it's between the uh, conflict between the Gauleiter and the local um, SA leader and they're at loggerheads that goes up to Hess. Hess is sort of the stick man uh, putting the stick about within the party and keeping the party running. He's the solver of those types of inter-party um, situations and of course as time goes on the party is more and more the government. Gauleiters become the regional governors if you will of Germany is much or more than any other, you know, official elements. So, um, but you still also have conflicts uh, between different government departments, you know, that don't, um, or in Nazi elements, you know, different things like between, I don't know, um, the NSKK and the NSFK, you know, the Flieger Corps or something. I don't know what it might be. And they go to him. So, He's running the party. Uh, he's running the party government. Uh, he uh, Hess is, but um, the Führer just sort of is remote. He lets his ministers run um, their departments. He also likes to set up conflicting organizations for the same task. Um, to have. Um, different departments, you know, trying to do the same thing because, you know, there's a myth perpetuated and pushed around by Star Trek, Star Trek, the science fiction series, just in case you didn't know I was jumping to think, that the most efficient government in history or known to man was the Nazis. It's one of the episode things. No, it wasn't. Nazi government was meant to be inefficient. Hitler wanted conflict between, um, you know, different police forces or, um, between the SS and the SA, or um, between the DAF and the RAD, or between the, the RAD and the organization TOTE, or whatever it might be, because he really thought that by having this sort of conflict that they would each try to cover the same sort of job in different ways, and who would be the best? at it to figure out the best way of doing it and then sort of the winner he would eventually pick and put whatever it was in charge of that agency or that region or that whatever and that's the way he tried to govern is sort of this conflict oriented government it is very inefficient very ineffective um, it is bloated meaning you have to have um, multiple departments covering the same things um, but that's the way Hitler wanted to rule. And it was also, to a degree, if you especially look at the, the Nazi party leading up to Hitler coming to power, is constantly in conflict with itself. Um, there's all kinds of fighting, including, is Hitler going to be the boss? There was several different, really sort of, um, 
thoughts of challenges. Is Hitler going to stay the boss, including Ernst Rome, whether there, even before, whether there's going to be a putsch. Um, then, of course, you also have like the Stennis revolts um, in Berlin with his essay that then goes on to be, um, he breaks away and, oh, I forget what, what they're called, but they were black shirts and they were own, their own sort of different, they weren't Nazis anymore, but they weren't communists. And so he had his own sort of essay moving around for a while. So well, that disappeared once Hitler comes to power and Stennis leaves the country, smartly so. Um, oh, uh, also you got the Strasser brothers before uh, Hitler comes to power are conflicting with each other, or, I mean, not, are conflicting with Hitler and who's going to be in charge of, of Nazism. Um, I think it's Gregor. I get them confused. Otto Strasser. No, I, yeah, Otto Strasser, I think, is the one that leaves. Because he sort of loses a power struggle. He leaves Germany. He's in Czechoslovakia for a while and tries to assassinate Hitler at one point. Sends in a, an assassin who gets caught. Um, I think that was Otto Strasser. Gregor stays in um, Germany and um, continues to run, I think, one of the newspapers out of Berlin, one of the Nazi ones. And he gets killed in the Night of the Long Knives. So the one that leaves um, survives. Uh, then at some point he realizes that I think again I think it's Otto that, that leaves. Um, Czechoslovakia is too dangerous, so then he goes to uh, I think it's Portugal, and then eventually over to um, what is it Canada, and where he he's in North America. Um, I know for sure by the time uh, the war starts, or at least the war starts for the U.S. So, you know, there, so a bunch of these people are pushed out and different stuff. So Nazi party uh, politics prior to, you know, the Nazis coming to power is very chaotic. And to a degree, it stays that way. Um, you've got um, Goering becoming president of Prussia. So he's in charge of the Gestapo and those police. Other police are in charge of other sections. And so, you know, other regions and different conflicts. And it's only over time does Himmler fully get in charge of all of the police everywhere, including the Gestapo. And the Gestapo has moved into the SS officially, not just its own department. So you get all this stuff over time. It's constantly conflicting. And Hitler's trying to stay above it. And the minister type levels and the very, very um, high levels people, they know that Hitler knows what's going on, that there's these conflicts. But your sort of lower mid-levels and your sort of low-level people, they all see this as, oh, Hitler doesn't know. If we all, if Hitler only knew, he would solve this problem. Now, sometimes he was causing the problems because putting in some sort of policy and the people don't like it. And then he would come in and, oh, oh, the, the local gal later overstepped his bounds or misunderstood and I'm here to solve it. Sometimes personally coming, sometimes just sending a letter and, and whatnot and a, and a representative, maybe Hess or somebody to come in and officially um, do the um, Fuhrer's proclamation. And the local Galliter, especially if he was following Hitler's or one of the higher-ups orders, knows he's not in, in any sort of um, trouble, just that they have to pull back on the policies. Now, sometimes the Galliter does sort of push further ahead uh, with a Nazi program than he should. And sometimes it works. Sometimes the people accept it and everyone's like, and the Nazis are like, well, good. Now let's have all Galliters do this. Sometimes that happens. Other times it's like, oh shit, this is causing problems. He does get a slap on the wrist. And there are some demotions and firings and whatever else. So um, Hitler runs this chaotic organization. Um, that's just the way Hitler runs things. Um, but this, So this whole office thing is all for show. And it's cool if it's if it's the kind of show you want to do. And if you're trying to have a big, impressive country, eh, that's what you sort of do. Especially, and if you look at the whole thing, it's a different architectural style, you may note. But it's very much along the um, uh, Palace of Versailles. Now, Hitler, I don't know if Hitler actually ever visited Versailles once they got Paris. He had never been to Paris in peacetime or before they conquer it. But... Um, just the idea of the long hallways, you move from one sort of room to the next room that are long, in essence, maybe not so much hallways, but long halls. 
you know, um, meeting halls kind of thing that you move around and different courtiers and diplomats and diplomatic groups might be around for some big thingy. And it's that sort of kind of stuff that it's sort of patterned after getting into meet them. Okay, and so again, this affects many, many countries and the NSDAP gained popularity, maybe just because they stopped construction of it and Berlin is not tearing up Berlin so much. Okay, we're at 585 ICs, doing well. We're just into January 8th, and I want to thank all of you for watching. I want to thank you if you did um, like the video. It really does help give visibility, and trust me, this channel needs visibility. And please post questions, comments, suggestions, ideas, um, corrections. Love hearing from you. See you next time for more Arts of Iron.